Hi there, my name is April Sautel and welcome to my channel. Today what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be finishing up the easy build and block quilt. This is going to be step three. This is the last and final step for this quilt. All we're going to be doing is binding it today. So I'm going to show you how to uh, cut the bind in and put the bind in on. We'll sew it on. What you're going to need for this project is you'll need a you'll need to measure your quilt top. You're going to need a calculator, you'll need a rotary cutter, you're going to need a long ruler, and you're just going to need a pen that what you're going to do is we're just going to um, figure out how much uh, binding we are going to need. Now, it's a very easy method to uh, figure this out. I'm going to show you how we'll do that. So what you're going to do is you're just going to take your quilt and it can be folded in half. You're going to measure. All you're going to do is measure your quilt. So I've got it folded in half. Mine is going to be 31 inches. So 31 and it's in half. So it's 62 inches. So that's my length. So I'm going to put 62 on a piece of paper here. All I'm doing is I'm going width times length okay so i'm going to go the length is 62 so to make this really simple i'm just going to go 62 on both sides that's my length and then my width is going to be is 52. so I'm just going to write down 52 on the top and the bottom. I'm going to take my calculator now and I'm going to go 52 plus 52 because there's two, there's two widths. And then I'm going to go 62 plus 62. So that gives me 228 inches that's width times length and that gives me 228 inches now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to I know I'm gonna have my inches be two and a half inches I'm just gonna take my perimeter of my quilt how we determined that so that was 228 inches I'm gonna add 10 inches to that just to be safe so I have 238 inches is what my total number is going to be. Whenever you get your perimeter, when you come around and you do your length plus your length plus your width plus your width, that will give you your perimeter. And then you're always just going to add 10 inches to that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your number. My number is 238 inches is what I'm looking for. I'm going to divide that by 40 inches. That's my width. I'm going to need, it's 5.95. That's how many strips I'm going to need. So I'm going to need 5.95, but I'm just going to round that right up to six strips. So that's how you determine that. Okay, what we're going to do now is let's just go right in and we'll cut some strips up. I want two and a half inch strips. All I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten out my I'm going to straighten out my um, fabric here I'm going to line my I'm going to line my um, uh, fold and I'm going to look at the top and I'm going to line that up and I just want to straighten this out okay. so trim that right off I'm just going to fold this over and spin this around. Now I'm going to start cutting some two and a half inch strips. And now I can open this back up. I need six strips. So I'm just going to square up here at two and a half inches. I've got a line on the top here that I can use as my guide to make sure I'll be nice and square. Coming down my fabric, making sure my making sure my two and a half inch line is just a, 
midge onto my fabric, so I'm not in midair there. Okay. And I'm going to do that. This one. I'll slide that over. I'm going to do this six times. So line that up. And a nice and square. You're always looking to make sure you're nice and square. Slide that just enough so I can see the table. I don't have to move it really that much. Now, you can always buy, they sell, you know, um, jelly rolls. Those always come in two and a half inches. You can make your own. They sell binding. This is just going to be single fold binding. But you can buy binding already pre-made at the store. The only thing about that is it's hard if you, you have to just kind of go with their colors. If you want something that's your own, uh, you know, you want to pick your own color. Well, obviously, you'll have to just make that. It really isn't. It's it's very simple to make, though. So, okay, so all I'm going to do now, I line, I've got all my six strips cut. I'm going to take my ruler, and I'm just going to cut my salvage right off. Just line my ruler up and give that a nice cut right there. Okay, so what I want to do now is to do straight line by it, uh, to do straight line binding, all we're going to do, we're going to take our fabric. And the reason we're doing straight line binding is just because it's easier for a beginner just to get the hang of how this is all going to work. So I'll show you another method another time, but for today, we'll just do straight line. You're just going to line this up. You're going to take this to your sewing machine and you're going to sew a quarter of an inch. Okay? And then you're just going to keep connecting ends, right sides together. So you're going to take your next piece and you're going to flip that over when you're at the sewing machine. And then you'll just sew that a quarter of an inch. Okay, I'll meet you at the sewing machine. Okay, I'm over here at my Janome 6700 piece sewing machine. What I'm doing is I've laid down one piece of our binding. I'm laying another piece right on the top, just matching that up. I'm going to use my quarter of an inch, um, my needles at a quarter of an inch, and I'm just going to use my uh, painter's tape as my guide. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way down. Now, what you're going to see is that is connected right there. And it's going to make one continu continuous line. So what I'm going to do, I will keep this all, push this all up to the front of my machine, out behind it. Up to the front, though. I will come in through the front. What I'm going to do, I'm going to lay another one down right on top. So right sides again, put my press a foot, quarter of an inch, and so. Now, I don't even need to break that thread. All I've got to do is just make sure my fabric's nice and straight, pulling it out, guiding it, guiding it, guiding it, my piece of fabric. Now, I've got this edge. I'm just going to grab another a uh, piece of binding, another strip, and I'm just going to place that on top. I'm going to do the same thing. And you're just going to, you can chain piece. So you don't even have to break the thread. There's that. Take your, this is the piece that's connected now, so just guide it back out. Lay it flat. 
and grab another piece. Just remember, as long as you're feeling that it's um, you haven't twisted it, then you're gonna just do right sides together. And we've got one more here. Just make sure you don't get twisted. You're just gonna keep that right side face up. Okay, I will see you back at the cut mat. Now we're back at the cutting table and you can see we have one long continuous piece of binding. All you're gonna do now is you're just gonna go and you're gonna snip the little, you're gonna just snip all these little uh, pieces of thread that are holding the um, binding together. Okay, that one already was, and one right there. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this over to the iron and we're going to press it in half. But before we do that, I'm just going to press these seams flat. So I'll see you in just a second. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to run my iron right over those seams. So I'm just going to keep pulling this fabric. Just give it, I don't need to trim that. Just give that a quick little, just flatten them out, flatten them out. All you're doing is I'm just going to keep dragging this and the goal is just to flatten out those seams. And then what I'm going to do, I've got my iron with um, water because I'm going to use steam. I'm just going to take and I'm going to fold this in half. I'm going to fold my binding right in half now. I'm just going to give it a nice press all the way through. Fold it in half and get a nice crease line. And then you're just going to keep dragging it. Um, you'll just keep dragging it to like your right or to your left. All I'm going to do now is I'm just going to roll up my binding. I've got it all pressed. I've got one big long continuous strip. And I just like to roll it. I like to have it. Um, I'll set it in something as I'm binding. That way I can guide it out as I need it. Okay, I've got my binding all ready and now I will see you at the sewing machine. I'm gonna set this in a little, just a little plastic container so it will be right beside me. After we've got our binding all ready, before we go to the sewing machine, we just need to open up our binding. We're gonna make a 45 degree angle right here at the top. One here is there's our 45. I'm just going to fold that over and give that a little press. Okay, that's going to be our start point for when we start our quilt. I'll see you at the sewing machine. I'm over here at my Juki TL 2010Q sewing machine. I've got my stitch length to three. I've got my quarter of an inch uh, needle is set at quarter of an inch. I've got my walking foot on. I've got my bind in here in my little bucket, and I've got some white Oriflame thread on my sewing machine. You can use any color thread that you like um, that matches your quilt. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come down about a foot approximately. I just don't wanna start at a corner. So I'm gonna come down about a foot. What I've done here is I've got my, I'm gonna open up my bind in a little bit, and I'm just gonna sew down a few inches, probably five inches. I'll just, I'm gonna stay right to the edge of my presser foot. And what I'm doing is I'm staying all on the edges of my quilt and of my binding. Draw edges together. So I'm gonna come down, break that thread. Now I'm gonna close this up. So this is where we made the 
um, 45 degree angle. You're just going to sew it down it and then you're going to fold it right back over. Come leave a few more inches here, about where you left off. And you're just going to line everything back up. Stand right to the edge of your fabric, raw edges together, and you're just going to sew and you're going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way down. And here we go. You're going to need to pull on this a little bit. Like you don't want to, um, you're going to let it just glide, but you'll see you'll, it'll have a little, um, just to hold on to, I guess is all you're doing. You're not really pulling it. You're just kind of holding on to it to guide it. Stay right at the edge of your presser foot. Follow all the way down. Just keep making sure that you're aligned here. I'm using my blue painter's tape as my guide to keep me straight. And you're just gonna continue down. Now the straighter you make your binding and the straighter that you iron it in half, you can see here, this is in half. Every once in a while, you're gonna come where you might not have ironed it all the way in quite in half. That's where you can run into some problems. So just be sure when you're doing the ironing, you are touching the, the raw edges together. If not, you just don't have enough and it doesn't pull over enough. Okay, so right here you can see, this is what's happened. See my raw edge is not touching this raw edge and I already pressed that. I'm gonna fix that right now. I just, what I should have done when I was ironing was just been a little more careful. But I want that right together because if not, I'm gonna have maybe uh, my stitches are not gonna go through both fabrics and then it, it's not going to uh, lay, right, lay right on my quilt. So just be sure that you're being careful while you're doing your ironing. You're going to come all the way down and as soon as you get to about a quarter of an inch which is about here right here I know where that is you could put a pin there if you wanted to I'm just going to hold it down with my needle here and follow that I am going to come and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pivot my quilt and I'm going to come right off the edge right off at that same corner. Here's the corner. I just wanna bring my needle off onto that corner. Okay, I'll cut the thread here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my quilt. So here, here's the quilt. Now we're gonna just look and we're gonna make sure Lift your, lift your binding up, fold it back, and make sure you've cut all of these edges. If you had a spot where, if you had a spot where you didn't catch the edge, you're gonna want to go back right then and and fix that because it will have a hole in it when you turn it over. All right, I've got some threads here I want to get rid of. They're just in my way. Okay, now we've come to the corner, and what we're gonna do here, I've sewn off. So you could, I've sewn off at that angle. You could sew off at the angle, or you've sewn off at the angle. So you could have just cut your thread right there and pivoted. I just chose to go in that direction. That won't interfere with my quarter of an inch that I needed to leave to do my fold. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my fabric all the way up, face up, bringing it way in front of me. And I've got this nice angle here. All I'm gonna do is take my finger and I'm gonna fold it right back down up on top of itself, matching up the top, the raw edges, see? Now, what I'm gonna do, I wanna make sure I'm lined really nice and uh, even because this is gonna be important later when we do our mitered edges, our mitered corners. 
So now that I've got this like this and everything feels good and straight, even here and even here and even here, I'm going to push this back up under and I'm just going to start sewing right on the edge as we've been doing. And now I'm just going to come down and I'm going to follow this whole side. I'm going to do this all the way around the quilt. I'm going to have four corners. So we're going to do four times. We're going to have to stop and, and do that. So if you can see here, now we've got this, how this is sewn. So I've come in, I folded it over and now I've come down. So when we go to fold this over, we have a nice mitered corner here. Okay, but let's just finish up all of our sides. And all you're doing is just guiding. If you want to use the gloves, this might be a good time to continue to use them just because it just holds everything. It's easier to pull and push around everything when you're just doing the guide. You know, sometimes it's just slippery to maneuver the fabric this way. I'm not like, it looks like I'm really pulling on it. I'm not, I'm just like holding it so I can keep it kind of open, you know, stretched, not stretched out, but like flat. Okay, and just continue down. What you don't want to do though, I'll tell you from experience, is pull, keep pulling on this piece because then you're going to have a problem. But see here how there's a little bit, I, when I ironed, I didn't quite bring it over. It's okay, just do it right now. You can see, you can see that you did that, where you didn't make that perfectly straight on the edge. You can fix it during this point. You just go the speed you want to go. I always like to go from the back to the front. I like the look of when you when my quilts have um, when the fabrics lay laying the binding is laying on top of the front of the quilt versus it laying on the back of the quilt. I think it just frames it. I like the look of it for myself. But you can do it either way. Start from the front and work your way to the back or start from the back and work your way to the front. You'll find what looks best for you. Again, the iron is really, it is, it is important to bring those two edges together perfectly straight if you can. But again, you can fix it right here too. Sometimes you're just moving right along at that iron, feeling like it's straight because you're not seeing both sides. You just take your time now and when you're sewing this you should you should find that it comes out nice and um straight and even i'm at the corner again so i know my quarter of an inch is coming right up here so i'm going to pivot now and i'm going to just come right off the edge so what that means again i'll just show you that one more time I just know my quarter of an inch is here. I need to get off. So I just sew and then jump right off. So when I go to make my fold again, my minor corners, I'm going to fold up and back down. Up. You want to be lined up on all sides. So these matching, these sides are matching. This is matching here. And you're matching along the edge. There, you're gonna just put that back under and 
keep going. Coming to our last corner now. And I'm going to pivot off. I'll make my last miter. If I could say one thing that I feel is like really uh, helps in this, it is the walking foot. I used to do it without a walking foot and it always felt like I did a lot of tugging. But by having the walking foot on, it just glides right through like nothing. So you might want to just, you know, try it both ways and you'll see what works for you. It just is something that I really do like to do because it, seems to it seemed to help me a lot a lot okay so here I'm coming down my last I'm all matched up I'm coming down my last uh, corner here and what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna continue down until you can see I'm gonna be coming right up until the point of the beginning and I want to come over probably I'm just going to cut it right here. I want to overlap a couple of inches. All right, so I am going to continue down. Now I'm going to open this and I'm going to tuck this in. I'm actually going to give it a little bit more cut because it's a little bit too long. Okay, and now I can just tuck that right in there nice. And straighten that all up. I'm just gonna ride right over the whole thing now until I meet my other stitches. And when I get there, I'm just gonna do a couple of back stitches. I'm gonna leave that just like that, that little spot that I made. And I'm gonna flip this over. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this to the ironing board and I'm going to just press this all open. I want it, I want this just to lay really flat for me. I want the seam here, this seam, to just open and be nice and flat. So when I flip this over to the front, and you can start anywhere on your quilt. You don't have to start at any uh, special spot for this, except maybe not a corner. So you're going to flip this over and I'm going to press this first and then when I do I'm going to bring this over so when I sew down my what my goal is is to not have my stitches show through the back so I'm going to try to keep it on top of the binding up front so there's a stitch here, that's where I went in my quarter of an inch. I'm gonna try to stay right on that. So when I get my bind in where I want it, when I'm ready to stitch, if I stay right around this quarter of an inch, I'm not gonna come through onto this back fabric. I'll see you in a second. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my hot iron with steam and I'm just going to push this binding open all the way around. I'm just laying it flat, opening up that seam a little bit. So when I go to turn it on the machine and pull the binding to the other side, it's going to be um, just so much easier to work with. So just do that all the way around. And I'll meet you back at the sewing machine. So I'm back at my Juki 2010Q uh, sewing machine. I've got my stitch length at three. I've got my walking foot on. I'm at a quarter of an inch on my needle. And I'm just going to come about halfway down my quilt, maybe not quite halfway. I'm gonna take my bind in and I'm gonna fold it over to my sew line that I had from the back when we attached the 
bind into the back of the quilt. I'm just gonna bring that over to my sew line, maybe just a smidge above it. And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my walking foot and I'm gonna set it down and I've gotta follow some sort of a guide here. So I'm going to just barely have my walking foot, this toe over my fabric. You're gonna find where it's gonna work for you. What we don't wanna do, we don't wanna go over the stitch line and we don't want to go so far over that we go past our binding on the back and end up in the in your back end. So I'm just going to attach this binding right to the stitch line and put my toe here, my walking foot toe, just a smidge on the fabric. And I'm going to just start sewing all the way around my quilt. And I'm just going to keep going slow I'm going to um, be sure to keep adjusting now if you don't want to make all these adjustments you can use clips or you could use pins uh, to to hold you in place I'm just going to just keep making the adjustments for this tutorial I'm going to stop right here just so I can show you what the back is going to look like So see how I'm just right on the back end and on the front here. All right, and now we'll just continue. So you don't want to be tugging too much on your binding. And it is a little tricky. You've got to find that like happy spot of where that's going to fall, where your needle is going to fall onto the binding and then not hit the back end. It will take some practice, but you will get it. And you're just going to do this all the way around the quilt, but you do want to keep stopping and checking. And if you find that you went over too far on the quilt, you might want to take the stitches out or you might be okay with that. I'm not a big stitch ripper so if I go over a little bit I might just decide to leave it so now remember a lot of people have different techniques some people like to go from front to back some people like to do it this way I guess I just like this look of this on the this uh, little flap here on the on the right side of the quilt I'll show you what it looks like on the back. You, it's, it's more flat. So it's just preference. There's no right way and no wrong way. Now, this is a very good time. I would start probably with a, practicing a couple of quilts, maybe with this method. And then when you come to, um, after you get a little bit of practice, you can even do this on little, make little small quilts, just little tiny ones, just to get this practice. And then it's a good time to go on a machine if you have any decorative stitches and do some of those. Those are pretty fun to do on um, binding as well. And sometimes you can just do other, you can like make two lines. So let's just say you're doing this and your line is all messed up and you're not happy with it. Just do another line. Now, once in a while, you might find that while you're a beginner and you're practicing that you get um, a lot of um, thickness because maybe your quilt isn't squared up all that much. Maybe that just is going to be more practice too. But then what you could do is just to flatten it out, put another stitch beside it. That will flatten it out a little bit. It's going to take a couple of quilts before you probably can, you know, have it. It did me anyway. Have it so it's not all, all those things I just said. So we're coming to an edge here. We're just coming to the corner. And all you're going to do here, I'll show you, we've got a, method to do here. Yep, 
Yeah, these little threads, you can just tuck them right back into the quilt or trim them off. If you pre-wash your fabric, you're gonna have a lot more threads too. All right, so just make sure you're tucking all of your little strings in or cutting them off. You don't want them to show. And just keep going. Following whatever line you've decided to go on on your presser foot. Sometimes you do have to like tug a little bit uh, just to get it a little bit flatter, but not too much. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come right to the edge. I've pulled... Let me just show you here. So I've pulled my bind in toward me and I'm just bringing this down at an angle, like a 45 degree angle. I'm going to just come to the edge and then I'm going to cut my thread. So it's nice and flat. I've pulled it all the way down and I've flattened it out. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull it back up and that's where I'm going to get that mitered corner. Okay, right here. So I'm just going to spin this around. Brought that to the edge. Bring it back over to my, bring it back over to my um, sew line here, which is right there. And then I've got a mitered corner. And you want to catch your thread and make sure you're tacking that corner down. Now I'm coming up to where I made, I connected the two pieces of binding and I made that miter and I tucked it in. So this is going to be a little bit thick here. So I'm just going to fold that up to the sew line all the way. Just takes a little bit of maneuvering. And I'm just going to come down and I'm going to go slow over that because it's pretty thick. And I don't want to lose, um, I don't want it to go all crooked on me. And I'm going to just hold it, keeping behind it, in front of it straight and behind it straight. I'm following the line on my presser foot. Now I'm coming down to a corner. And again, I'm just gonna pull all the way off, keeping my, keeping my, uh, I'm gonna just, now I'm just gonna keep my edge of my binding to my sew line Pulling this off straight and feeling with my thumb here that I'm nice and straight and a little bit tight and I'm going to come right to the edge and I'm going to give it a turn and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold this over all the way around. And just keep doing the same thing. I'm almost back to the point of beginning, so I'm just gonna keep going. If you get bunched up like this, just straighten yourself out. And you can see here's where I started. 
I just want to make sure I'm only on that line. I don't want to be too far over because if I am, I'm going to be off on the back. So let's just bring that down and connect right here. And I'm going to give it a little back stitch. Right there. I'm going to flip this over and make sure I was still on, which I was. And now what I'm going to do is I will see you back over at the cutting table. Hey, this is the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember to keep it simple and I'll see you next time. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day. Bye.